Action. 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 Action for him. Action for me. Let's do it. Sync the cameras. Sync cameras. Sync. Look at the thing. Sync this podcast. Synced up. We're synced up. This is the world's greatest action sports podcast. Should I talk into this mic too? What? What? Oh yeah, no, we're doing it all. Audio, video, sonic, what up? Smell? Yes. What's hey, the, what? I'm Chris Cote. Hi, I'm Todd Richards. If you've never you listened to this podcast before. You could win one of these before. guitar picks from oh, Cut You Up. Oh, those are good. Are these Cut You Up guitar picks? Used. Used. I heard all kinds of picking. I heard you were in here. I'm already derailing the podcast. That's fine. I heard you were in here practicing the other day. Oh, yeah? For Cut You Up. Yes. Two. What is it called? Cut You Up. I or guess. actually, I was... Still cutting you up? Depends on with the day, because sometimes I'm practicing solo. I got a solo show at the Belly no, Up on was, July 10th. This was, there was another human in here. Yes, we were doing a Cut You Up Scratch Tracks, they're called. Mr. Parker scratch is, Tracks. Uh, joining you. What is yes. it, what's Scratch Track, Chris? Scratch Track is a, it's kind of a fancy way of saying, uh, you're doing like a, a rough draft of your recording, so when, so you can practice. And New you songs? Go into the studio. New songs. New songs. New Cut You Up exclusive for uh, for all of our listeners out there. You know, I didn't realize that how much Cut You Up, uh, and this is... Uh, Kills this, it. This is a compliment. No, Cut You Up is freaking great. I love Cut You Up. Thank you. But you guys borrow a lot from Fugazi. Yeah, I would think... I think it's a, an unintentional... No, it's not a bad thing yeah. at all. But it's there's, a, there's a lot... I've been listening to a lot of Fugazi lately, and also, coincidentally... Some cut you up in my truck. I only have a CD player in my truck, and it seems the your cut you up CD won't come out. Do you have a six disc changer? No, I have a single disc changer. Do you? Well, if you did you did you switch your discs a lot when you had a? Remember you had to go to the trunk, get the six disc I, changer I had out, one and put those. those in there. I thought I was so hyped because I think I had a twelve disc at one Damn, point. Damn, he's got got a twelve inch. I mean twelve, 12 disc. Twelve disc, and you put all your discs in, and you have like a giant. Remember when you go on the road and you bring your um, your, your disc man? Yeah. And then you'd have like 7,000 CDs with you? Yes. That's a full tough. book with four, eight per page. And, but and then you'd like narrow it down and you get the small book. You're like, I'm yeah. only going to bring these. Yeah. And, that, and then you double them up and then they'd get loose and fly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that trip down memory lane was brought to you by one of our many amazing sponsors as we get into the actual podcast. Uh, that some of you have come here for, others of you are here for that kind of maybe. Talk. Maybe you were looking for yeah. a religious podcast and you found yes. this Monday Mass instead. God bless you. I'm not going to tell you which God blesses you. It might not be a good one. I this see. is the Monday Mass with Chris Cote and Todd Richards on July Hi, I'm Todd Richards. 6th. July 6th. And right. as a derailment, let me ask you something. Okay. So, typically July 4th, is the national holiday. Happy Everybody birthday, USA. Stuff. And then they the next day, everyone's hung over, and it's like a day of rest. Mm-hmm. And then you go back to work the day after. Mm-hmm. This year, mm-hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, Todd. I don't know if you know your U.S. holiday history. I do. I don't remember July 5th being such a, a, a day of leisure, such a, a national holiday, because it's, places were closed yesterday. Uh, people were out in the streets. Took me two hours to get sushi last night delivered. It was raging in, on July fifth, and I, I guess that's a new. Well, no, thing. it's because the Fourth of July fell on a Sunday. So the government is like, you know what? Fourth of July is on a Sunday. We're going to give everybody a break. I guess. We're going to give them the fifth off. Observe it on the fifth. Mm-hmm. So does that happen just when it's on a Sunday? Like, is this in the Constitution? Is this in the Bill of Rights? Yeah. The Magna Carta. Yeah. Thomas Jefferson signed it. When okay, Ab- after the July 4th. When Abraham Lincoln crossed the Delaware. We'll give you time to heal. Do you have any July 4th injuries I should know about? I don't, but did you see the video no. of the kid with his hand blown, literally blown off no. at the Vista Skate Park? I, you told me about that video. I did not watch it by choice. I do not love lighting off my own fireworks. Danny, I like seeing them. Danny the Poot Dog sent this to me. And it was kind of, it was making its rounds the other day because my son was, he shrieked in his room. It's gnarly. Like, you It was a firework? Apparently it was an M80 went off in a kid's hand. Because squeezing it? It looks like, um... Meat? uh, Like one of those movies where like a a, a guy gets his hand blown off. Oh, God. And for some, I mean, be careful what you look, I mean, 
it's Careful probably off on the internet, the internet now. There. Don't go looking for it. I didn't want to see it, but I saw it, and it's that. It's, I was it's so gnarly that it looks fake. I was uh, concerned even just hearing about it from you. Yeah. Um, I have a. You want to see surf? I got a surf rash. Oh yeah. 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 That's from surfing so much on July Fourth for the. What a day. What a week. What a week. And now it's sunny again outside. It's like today's, summer's officially Today's like the first day that we've had sun, though, in, in the morning. Like when we wake up in the morning, we have sunshine in at least a month. I like that. I got a, um, I got an audio uh, message. We have some special guests we're going to call today. Two, I heard. Yeah, two special guests. That's and cool. we could make it three if we want, but maybe we'll just stick to two. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's get into this podcast. Okay, let's rifle through the sponsors. Here we go. Be Neat, Be neat Apparel. Apparel. BN3TH. Our code is MASS20. Put underwear yes. on you for cheaper. Nanocraft for CBD. For cheaper. The best underwear. Go Nan- ahead. Nanocraft CBD. They have all your CB needs from creams, CB lotions, needs. solves, and drops. Go to Nanocraft C- at Nanocraft CBD. Mass20 is our code all there. The Bubs code. Naturals. The do you like collagen? Of course you do. Why yes, wouldn't you? Do. you? Chris does. Look how strong his bone is. I got a giveaway happening right now on at Monday Mass. You could win your own MCT brain oil and collagen. At Bubs Naturals, our code there. Mass 20. You're seeing the theme here. Hanson Surfboards. The one, the only, the legendary. Encinitas Surf Shop at Hanson Surfboards. You can enter Mass 10 at checkout online to get a discount. That's right. What? Quick note there. Mm. I actually hung out at Hanson's with Lucas Dallager. Uh, my friend Jesse Dauber, Becky Bubbs was in there. The G's. It was really fun to go to a surf shop and hang out and talk to people. And it was it was a great time. So be a shop rat. There you go. Go ahead. All Keep right. going. Panic and Coffee and Tea. At Panic and Coffee and Tea. Waking up uh, San Diego since 1969. <laughs> chemistry Surfboards. 69. At Chemistry Surfboards. They make surfboards that go really well in the water. They're a small surfboard in company. In the water. You need to support them because you don't want to support pop-outs. Those things suck. You online. At you online. This is where we live on the internet. You can That's go right. there and find all kinds of crazy podcasts from wacky people, but mostly just us because we're True. the most important. At Definitely. New Greens. Do you like to have salad in a cup? Do you like vitamins? Do you yes. like to have advice yes. about health, sure. well-being, and emotional state of mind? Yeah. Then you can tune in to the Midlife Health Minute, but then get yes. all of your greens at New Greens. Com. And in Adventure mouth. IO. Adventures are happening all around us. We just had an adventure uh, of 4th of July. It wasn't was a sanctioned adventure. adventure, but it was an adventure nonetheless. Adventure IO at Adventure IO. Get your adventures going now. That Jesus. was Todd Richards on the that commercial That is the fastest block. we have blazed through. When all of our events. sponsors complain next week, I'm going to have to do it again. I'm going to listen to this message off air real quick to make sure there's nothing weird. Okay, hold on. Who's the pro? Uh, at one, so then I have to go to LA to see the doctor. Okay. Well, that was one of our guests. That was that was Poopies. He's yeah. got he's got uh he's got therapy and he has to see a doctor. Doctors and therapy. That's because this man injures himself quite often on purpose. I want to say congratulations to Poopies, who is now a member of the Jackass family. Yeah, and if you've been following Poopies uh career, he started in Carlsbad and most recently jumped into the water with a bunch of sharks and may or may not have been bitten. We won't know until the new Jackass movie. It's comes coming, out. right? It's Shark Week. I think it's coming. Oh, it is? I think it's part of Shark Week on Discovery. Well, these are all questions that he was supposed to answer. I get it's uh, you know what we're all very busy. Poopies now is very busy. He's one of the members of Jackass. Hey, so congratulations! I'm Poopies. not going to be here next week. Todd is not going to be here next Speaking week. Speaking of, of Shark Week, Shark Week, I am going. Where are you going? I'm going to my mama's house back. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go to Ma's house on Cape Cod. Um, my daughter and I are going to go there next Monday. I'm going to be there Monday through Friday. If you listen to the Monday Mass and you're on Cape Cod and maybe you might be surfing Marconi or maybe Le Counts hey, or maybe Marconi, how you doing? Newcomb. I'll probably be out there. I think it's only supposed to be like two to three all week, but I will definitely be out there. There's only supposed to be two to three sharks per spot Shh, they don't. per week. There's no sharks there. Fine. We're going to get to our other guests. Amity meets friendship. Check it out. What? Uh, well, I'm not going to introduce him until you. But this is Surf News, brought to you by Hanson's Surfboards. Uh, one more time. Shop. Where do I, where, where should I put my phone? Right here? Yeah, because right this is where the right noise here? comes out. That's where your ear goes. Even on speaker. Yeah. Right? Hey, folks at home watching, this is like this? I don't know. Or like this? I feel like I'm getting, uh, you're right. I'm getting yeah. a better um, signal. 
I feel like we're a, a better. Are we getting are we getting eggshells on this? We second? might have gone from two guests to zero guests. There is a wild card guest. Sorry, I'm not here to take your call right now. Oh, what the oh, fuck? Right All we're trying to do is promote people. All we're trying to do is promote great surfing stuff. Well, let's not. But now we're just talking to ourselves. Let's not say who this is because they'll, not prob- saying they'll probably call back in 10 minutes. <sighs> you want some more bad news? Yep. <laughs> Jordy Smith had to pull out of the Olympics due to a knee injury. I heard. Yeah, this is a. Uh, well, it's bitter sweet. It's bitter because I love Jordy Smith as a person and as a surfer. And what a, what a bummer to get injured before surfing's debut in the Olympics. I really feel for him because I know he really wanted it. Unfortunately, I, I, and I haven't read like statements or anything, but just the injury is too much to come back from. Mm-hmm. So very sad here, Jordy Smith is out of the Olympics, but also very excited to hear that Leonardo Fioravanti will be in the Olympics Leo's competing in. for Team Italy. He's in. He's in. Wow. So in looking at a p- potential Olympic scenarios, very again, very excited that Leo's in. Jordy's out. Um, last week we were talking about uh, Slater, Kelly Slater and the rumors. I think those can be put to rest because we've already seen now footage of John John Footage of Chloe and Dino both surfing. So you know they're going to push it but to that, the wire. But that means that also, you know, it's a win 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 because then we will have Kelly more likely than not doing commentary or some kind of a commentary role for, Commentado. for MBC. Yes. I believe that's the, the, the fast track. On yes. I, I hope so. I think Kelly Slater is not only the greatest of all time in the surfing now he's, era, he's, he's a great surfs, commentator. Right? He's a surfer. Okay. Um, Regular foot. He's won many world titles. Is he a lifeguard in real life? Uh, I know he's probably saved a few people. Just that's okay. he's the goat. All right. He's the greatest definitely. of all time, and he's a great commentator. So I, I I feel like if he's not surfing in the Olympics, he definitely needs to be talking in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Kelly Slater, Joe Turpel, boom! That is a team right there. That is it. I I think that'd be a great team. I will be at the Olympics be on site. Yeah. But you, my mom keeps asking me, well, where can I watch you? And I'm like, you can't. I'm not Allowed on to be anything. Seen. I'm in. I'm in there. So I, I, I don't know exactly. I, I know I'm going to be talking. I just don't know what, what you, where, you, where I'm going to be talking. You sent me a wonderful picture from Chiba. Chiba was looking pretty small the other day, but fingers crossed Dismal. that something happens. I mean, it looked like. Um, it was gray out. It was kind of victory at sea. It looked like a week ago here. Yeah, it just looked like, okay. Well, Maybe a wave is as high as the table we're sitting at right now. Maybe. And that makes picking a gold medalist that a little easier. bit more, more difficult. Who you, what, what, what's easy? Who's going to win? Uh, Gabriel or Italo? Yeah, basically. It's Hiroto O'Hara's backyard, literally. It'd be like you at your spot. Mm. That's Hiroto at his spot. Mm-hmm. Sergasawa Beach. I well, think I said it right. If you I, say it fast, it's... <laughs> I really hope they get some swell. I hope to, I hope so, too. Speaking of getting some swell, I mean, we have a potential... We've got a big, big news here. I texted him this morning. Should we just cold call one more guest? I feel like he's always on the show. He's always on the show because he's always doing stuff. Call Matt. Matt has been on the show a lot, too. <laughs> here, okay, here's the news. We're just going to give it to you. Albie Layer made a movie. With Matt Miola. With Matt... Well, well there's more. Uh, there, yeah, there's the photo. That's that's a Chiba. That's that's call call the other guy back. The other other guy. Yeah, because we know we can get this guy. He ain't doing nothing. Fine. Well, do you double call people? I mean, maybe he lost his chance. I'm gonna call him one more time. He didn't lose his chance. He's he lost just, his spot. What if he's trying? In line. To, he might be trying to run a freaking magazine. Well, I, it's all. Now, did you tell him that you were calling? Yeah, him? I did. And he. What, I DM'd on I, on the Instagram. Really. Yeah, maybe he's surfing. Like, ah, dude. It's okay. That's you know we don't need guests on this show. We're good enough. We're enough for you. We kind of need guests. Albie Lair made a movie. It's coming out on Friday. Um, it's gonna be if you're in the area. It's gonna be at June Shine and Scripps Ranch. It features Albie Lair. So Albie Lair made a movie featuring Albie Lair, which great, good. You're a, you're a great surfer. Do it. Matt Miola, Tori Meister, Tanner Hendrickson, Kai Barger, and Tyler Larone. Tyler Larone. It's called Rainbows in the Rear View. Rainbows in the Rear View. 
I'm excited for Catchy that. Catchy title. Yeah, Rainbows in the Rear View. That's coming out. Speaking of Sir Flix, man, Volcom just dropped a hammer. I did. I saw the, ad, the kind of like ad advertising for this online this morning. I didn't really get to it yet. Well, Volcom's last movie was called Psychic Migrations. It was awesome. I I would say Yago Dora kind of stole the show in that one. Mm-hmm. Well, in the new one, it's called Lobotomy. This is the first time we see a Volcom film with Jack Robinson and Noah Dean together. And they go freaking nuts on a huge, like, right wedge off a jetty. Noah Dean is so gnarly. Okay. How about <sighs> his new Switch game that he oh my gosh. debuted yesterday? Okay. That was, a, that was a huge part of this conversation. So you got Jack Robinson, Noah Dean, Yago, uh, Balaram. Ozzy Wright, some bonus Ozzy Wright footage, uh, Ryan Birch, and more. But to your point, mm-hmm. Noah Dean's switch footage is the best switch footage His, I've ever seen. The, just the alley oop. What the hell? He like did like the perfect alley oop. So proper. Actually, like a pretty proper ollie oh, too. Oh, bar- barrel to ollie See, switch. I kind of feel like the barrel looked like he was going switch, like it was kind of butt out style. That I think is that's the hardest thing to it, get rid it of. It allowed him to set up. Yeah. But then the ollie looked proper. Yeah. His half reverse attempt looked proper. I think, so I I can, I, I, we have a question um, from one that that actually fits into this conversation right here. Do we want to just go ahead and answer the question? Yeah, because it it has to do with um, this topic. Thomas Creighton Johnson, at Thomas Creighton Johnson on the Instagram, Mm -hmm. says, uh, we, both of you and I posted this uh, stab video of I love tables, a.k.a. No Dean, going switch, getting nuts. Mm-hmm. Tom Johnson said, damn, it's happening. How many years till being able to surf switch competently is a, quote, requirement to being taken seriously? Dude, I think it's, you know, if it becomes on trend, right. you know, if, if this gets enough hype and it becomes trendy with the kids and then the kids start to actually put, uh, you know, the time and the effort into like creating a decent switch riding style. Yeah. I think it's like less probably less than 10 years. And you and in terms of competition, you would have to judge it Dude. higher. Okay, so that's what I'm thinking like okay, so what if you've got let's just say you've got you're at pipe. Right. Okay, and you've already banged a couple eights or something. You you've got like you, you probably want to follow a traditional format of getting some Get your two waves. on the board yeah. and then all of a sudden you drop into a switch foot barrel yeah and then get spit out and then so that like there's going to be the people that are going to be able to surf switch yeah like do you think i guess the question that he's probably posing is like is it a novelty or will it become a staple like not not like a criteria, but like if you rip a wave switch stance, like say say you don't want to go backside. Yeah. Say you go to Chopu and you're like, fuck, I don't want to go backside. I'm dragging I'm arms. Go in front side. I feel like there it, it's kind of a, a a triple stager, right? It takes a person like Noah Dean. Mm-hmm. Jamie O'Brien was an early switch surfer, or like going way back. Buttons, right? Buttons yeah. was a, a guy who went switch both way. In yeah, yeah. Dale Dobson. There was a handful of people, and then Jamie O'Brien. I I remember distinctly seeing Jamie O'Brien get a seven at the Vulcan Pipe Pro going switch. Okay, so it's happened already. It has happened, but it wasn't like a score of consequence in that particular heat. But I think the first step is for surfers like Noah Dean. You know, if Yago Dora, uh, you know, Griffin Colapinto, some really influential, high elite level surfers, not high, you don't have to be high to go switch. Elite level surfers going switch on video, just like Noah Dean, that's step one. Mm-hmm. Step two would be for someone to do it in an event and not do it in a clowning around, right. jokey not like type a cir- of way. Not a circus way. Not a circus way of not like a, oh, he's going switch, that's cute. It's like, holy shit, he just did a switch backside air. That was insane. So it would take that, and it also would take the judges understanding that switch is harder. Mm-hmm. Um, and then step three would be just like a video part or a, a contest win. You know, I feel like a contest win is the best way to legitimize something new, a new idea. You know, Dark Arts, for example, at Surf Ranch, you know, kind of solidified themselves, I, I would say, as the preeminent technology 
for, in surfing, yeah, right? Yeah. By winning a CT event with that technology. So if somebody wins a CT event with a switch chance wave or a switch chance element to a wave, I think that will kind of wake people up and say, this is for real. Because how many frontside 360 years can you see? How many, you know, like you don't see enough progression, pop, shove it, you know, just right. cool tricks that we like to see. You're not seeing that enough, so maybe Switch would open that up. And, you know, when, so an example would be Bob Bernquist, right? When yeah, he I was hit the about scene yeah. um, from Brazil, he was riding for Anti Hero. Everybody knew he was really good, but then he started destroying everybody in vert events with half half of his run was switch, right? Right, and then that was I mean, how long yeah. ago? That was like twenty fifteen years ago. At least fifteen years ago, it was kind of like early. I don't know, maybe like late late nineties, something you know, like that. 80, yeah, like, I should say not ninety seven, ninety six, ninety seven is when he came on the scene and just moved to San Francisco and was like skating the yeah. warehouse and metal vert ramps all over the place. But yeah, it just yeah. went crazy, like. You know, that was the first dude you saw drop in switch, and his first air was a switch front center. Yeah. And I remember he was, you know, even basic tricks, switch 5 0 grinds and stuff like that yeah. were just next level because, you know, if somebody goes and does a switch floater and comes down and straight, it, I mean, I think the, the door is slightly ajar. I do thanks like. Thanks to Noah Dean. I do like, you know, if you look at old footage, particularly of Buttons, just because he was the mega yeah. innovator. Is like all that stuff where he's, you know, he's kind of, he's, what stance is he on his board? And he, right. he goes around, he goes into like a, he goes into like a switch floater and then lands and then he's back in onto his regular, the stance he's normally in. It's just, there's so much movement yeah. and dancing around on the board. Like that's, you can't really do that so much with a short board, but to be able to mix it up like yeah. that, I don't know. I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see. What happens, especially because Noah mm -hmm. Noah Dean's like the first guy that I've seen actually like break the boundary of getting in the air and making it. Look. Yeah, Itala Itala has been close a couple times. Yeah, but no, Noah still, Dean doesn't. He doesn't look like he's taking a shit when he does his air. He's still yeah. There's still some style issues with mm -hmm. switch, and a lot of times when I go to crowded breaks, and there's let's just say some surfers that are trying really hard, but they might not have the highest skill level. They look like they're going switch stance to me, <laughs> so maybe they need to switch their stance. And if you know who you are, switch your stance. See what happens. Maybe you might be better. Uh, either way, the new Volcom Flick is awesome. Very cool. And uh, it's on stab. Everything's on stab. Even this next thing. Well, because there's not really any place else it would be. Yeah. MondayMass.com, which yeah. I haven't you can come updated in many you can come years. For stuff. <laughs> a long time. We have a website? I kind of forgot how to. Yeah, remember we got a website? I didn't realize. Was, I sent it anything, to you. Is there anything and, on there? Uh, there's some old podcasts on there. But like, we, can sell, we can sell stuff on there. Hats, is there shirts. Is there like pictures? There's pictures of us. Do we have a bio on there? There's a, there's, there's a bio. Huh. It's just not very activated. Huh. It's on. Hmm. I told you all this information. Yeah, it's one ear out the other. I know. The business side of the podcast is not Todd's forte. Well, let's just say that. I'm here for He's here to talk. a good time. Surf 100 is a wave riding exposition that takes place over a single 100-minute period and is judged live at a later date by the internet. So, uh, 100 waves in 100 minutes? No. Uh -huh. No. That's the 100 wave challenge. Okay. That's for uh, boys to men. That's a cool foundation. We'll talk more about that down the line. You remember, you remember Kolohe and Dino, Griffin, Colapinto, and Ian Crane competing at lowers. Yeah. They're mic'd up. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Well, we saw it again with Jack Robinson, Jay Davies, Jacob Wilcox, Kale Walsh at North Point. You remember that one? I don't remember Mike's that one. Mic'd up. Well, the next trill it, tri trisome group. You're right. The next group of surfers to surf in the Surf 100 event put on by Stab, Dane Reynolds, oh, Mikey boy. February, and Mason Ho in mainland Mexico. Oh, my God. Mic'd up. Hello. Cannot wait. What a contrasting. What a treat. You know that Mason's just going to be babbling to himself. Either. I can't wait. I can't wait. And if our guest would have picked up, we would have got more information on that. And he so, might still pick up. He's surfing. We should be surfing, but he's surfing for real. Where do you think he's surfing? I don't know. Do you know the Stab offices in Oceanside, California? It is? Yeah. They have a beautiful office there. I thought and, they were in LA. No, I was invited to visit a couple times and I just... I have a hard time getting past Ponto. Seriously. Or even getting to Ponto. Right. I don't go that. I don't, I'm, I'm in the boat. Are they, in. are they in Surfboard Alley? Yeah. They're, they're right there. They're, they're in the zone. Really? Yeah. 
Stab opposite. Stab Oceanside. All right. Um, what the Zuck? Dude. What Zuck, the Zuck? Zuck, man? Zuck is not looking good. Zuck went full. Uh, so every... If you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Mark Zuckerberg's fourth Zuckerberg, fourth of July video, where many people are saying he went full cringe. Stop zucking the life out of Tahoe. Flag waving, surfing on a super hydro foil. Ugh. That was Lake Tahoe. That was Lake Tahoe. It's actually, uh, we have a family place up on the lake and it's kind of right around the corner. And Zuck just zucked you guys out. He zucked up your... Zucking the life out of Tahoe. And I've seen now uh, comparisons between Zuck, Kai Lenny, and Jacob Zake, which wow. I don't think is fair. That's gnarly. You shouldn't l- lump those three together. Zuck is in a class of his own, kookiness. I'm still trying to see. I think my, I had a comment on Kook of the Day the other day. You did? Did it go viral? Yeah, I said, so if you haven't seen this this video footage of Mark Zuckerberg looking like he's on an electric... Is it electric foil or is he foiling behind a boat? Electric foil. So it looks like maybe he's be- he might be behind a boat. At any rate, deal. he's holding an American flag. Yes. And he it, it's the most awkward fucking looking thing. He's awkward. And I just said it looks like a tilapia cosplaying as a man. I like that. I like that. And what's a tilapia for those of the people out there? A tilapia is a know? very cheap fish. Like the like the most commonly eaten fish. It's there's a giant family of tilapia. Right. But it's just kind of like a fucking junk fish. Junk fish. That's what they make cheap fish and fish and chips out of, right? Cat like food. fish tacos, cat food. Yeah, you're right. Zuckerberg is a tilapia. It's kind Cuba of a, like a tilapia. I mean, that's an easy low hanging fruit target to make fun of Mark Zuckerberg. Um, loose towels. We have loose towels. Many of them, right? Yeah. Loose towels. They're a friend of the podcast. They just launched their official towel for the USA Surf Team. That's We're gonna cool. have one of the most driest. Surf teams in the whole world at the Olympics. Dry it up. I, I've got a two, two maybe three Olympic questions for you. Right. The Olympics are coming up. I don't know if you guys knew out there. There's 3.9 billion people that watch it on a four, four quad, quad annual basis. What? Is that a thing? Yeah. Quad annual. Mm-hmm. It's every four years. I don't know how you, if you know the Olympics. Um, f- for surfers, I, I know with skateboarders, the graphics had to have been out for six months right. before the Olympics yes. to ride in the Olympics. For surfers, mm-hmm. and I should know this, I'm asking you this because you would probably know via snowboarding, Do what kind of board graphics, laminates, sponsor representation can they have? They're the logo of, the, like, let's say, like just like a mayhem. Okay. Just that logo on the you tail. Can, you can, well... Not on the tail so much. Well, wherever wherever, it wherever the logo is, it has to be a certain size. Okay. It can't be bigger than that certain size. And and you can't. There's no sponsor logos. No Volcom Hurley stickers. Nothing. Okay. Nada. Um. Airbrush. Yeah, you could probably have an airbrush. You can have your own air yeah. spray. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I write writ? Can you can you write written messages to your friends and family? Probably. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like I love you, mom, on the bottom yes, of your board. Yes, you can write that. Really? Yes. Unofficially, don't Carissa maybe start writing on your board. We don't know yet. I'm pretty sure you can do that because okay. people did that stuff. They wrote on their mittens like "Hi, mom." And oh, stuff. okay, okay, all right. I'm in. That's it, you know you can. It's they're very. Um, There's a lot of rules. Do you know who is the? Uh, you should probably know this. Who is the official um, clothing like, sponsor? Trunk sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. Polo. Really. Polo. Ralph Lauren. So that's who. But what about like if you're gonna wear what if you, what if it was chilly out and you needed to wear like um, a, a vest. jacket, a vest or something? I have no idea. I don't know. There has to be like, I this, don't all know. this shit has probably already been taken care of. Well, it's probably in one of the 428 emails I've gotten mm-hmm. from uh, the IOC, and I, I'm only through about 12 of them. <laughs> There's a lot of rules and regulations. Well, you'll be there. Was it like that when you went to the Olympics? Yes. Just tons of paperwork. Yeah, lots of paperwork. And you, so... You have to agree. It's like, I don't remember signing a contract, but, but it's, it's, there's a lot of things that are, you know, surprise drug tests. I like, saw one like that was like, um, not guerrilla marketing, but uh, it's like surprise marketing or something. Like you can't, if you're part of the Olympics, you can't be there and go, Hey, I got my Nanocraft CBD over here with me. Yeah. Check it out. Like, you you'll get busted, it. right? You get busted. Yeah. And also, 
um, brands can't advertise with you during the Olympics. Are we even allowed to say the O word on the Monday Mass Podcast? We, could, we can say it. But we can't in, 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 ingest it. Don't spray it. Don't inhale it. Uh, yeah, so that was surf news. You got any more surf news? No. Yeah, that was pretty good, surf news. Our guests really came through there. Hopefully they they'll call back in the middle of nerd news. Oh, remember, remember when we were talking to Coco Ho and we brought up longboarding? And then two days later, there was a whole podcast of Coco Ho talking about longboarding? No. What yeah, we, we, we got the scoop on that one. She had a podcast. I was also on Stab. She was, really? So Stab gives and takes. In a, in a in the most complimentary way. I don't think they actually listen to this podcast. So it <laughs> look, look. <gasps> Guess what, ladies and gentlemen, our guest called in. Of Sir Stab, News is not over yet. We got him, ladies and gentlemen. There's, We've already talked about everything. There's still time to talk about, but he's here. This is Ashton Goggins, ladies and gentlemen. Stab Max. Hey, Coach, hey, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, was dealing with LAX drop offs and. Whoa, stuff. you're still doing stuff. Hey, uh, you're here with Chris and Todd. This is Ashton Goggins. Editor, editor in chief, correct? Stab me. Uh, Stab. Editor at large. Editor. I just dropped off our editor, editor in chief. Oh my uh, god! I did the same thing. Brendan Buckley uh, is our editor in chief nowadays. He's Brendan Buckley. Or oh, he also, at Transworld also, Surf as well. Big Dick Power Surfer. Mm, yes, the BDPS um, is now editor in chief. So editor at large. Well, this is a scoop yep. we're getting right here, yep. Todd. Yep. So that means that uh, you get to go have all the fun while the other people in the office stay in the office, right? Exactly. Yeah. It keeps me out of the office as much as possible, which I think is probably a blessing on everybody at the office. Including yourself. But, <laughs> hey. but yeah, I just dropped Buck off, actually. He's been doing a month and a half in the office with us after Stab High. He was one of the judges down there in Costa Rica and came back. And he's heading back to France for a few months. Um, to like pack up his life and then move to Portugal. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. What? We didn't yeah. even talk. So stab high, stab as always. Right now, crushing everything and surfing in the best way possible. We've got a couple of things we want to ask you about. Uh, let's start as you because you just mentioned it. Stab high. Tell us about the latest and the greatest with stab high. I believe you guys are done filming it. Now it's all about putting it together. You tell us. Uh, yeah, we did. We did stab high again this year. Last year we did it the mental wise. Uh, it what started as sort of like the wave pool contest. We wanted to sort of evolve into the ocean again. It was sort of like Sam McIntosh's vision for it. And with this year, we sort of brought back the like teen house vibe. So we rented these like big villas in Costa Rica and Hermosa, where Mikey Cermel used to live. Um, and we brought down like eighteen guys and six of the ladybirds. And they were there for like 15 days, basically like missioning around Costa Rica to get their biggest right and left airs, um, sort of similar format to Indo. And yeah, it was sick. We had Nate Fletcher down there as a judge, and Ian Crane, and Geiselman, and the whole like staff high crew down there. Hell so yeah! It was uh, super fun. And so yeah, that that they're filming that like sort of reality TV style. We had like 10 filmers down there, like everyone mic'd up the whole time, and like this sort of like format throughout the 15 days where they were like chasing different scores. Uh, and that goes live, I think, uh, I don't want to hold me to this in two weeks. Hell yes. Uh, so that come, that the first episode of that comes out in two weeks. And I think it's a five episode series with a live broadcast fifth episode final, uh, which should be super fun. Who, who won? Who won? <laughs> who won? Yeah, yeah who won? <laughs> ah, almost got it. Uh, I, can't, I, I, I can't even say the people that are in it that haven't been in it before. It's like all surprise, new people from all over. Right. They have like a pretty cool international cast. I think you uh, said nude really. people from all over. Yeah. New yeah. people? Oh, yeah. new people. Hell yeah. <laughs> Todd is a, Todd is probably the biggest fan of the electric acid yeah. surfboard test. And it's funny because Todd only rides two types of surfboards <laughs> in his whole life. He's never ridden a longboard. He's never ridden a single it's, fin. It's not true. I just don't like him. Well, exactly. So why are you 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 have a question well, about? E- I I uh, I think I texted you like last week or something, just or two weeks ago. It's I just I thought that that the electric acid surfboard test with Coco and Mason was just like one of the most pleasurable things to watch, just because of their interaction, the music, like everything, the places that you guys were at, the filming, like it was all, it was it just kind of leveled up. I've always enjoyed them, but I think this one kind of leveled up as far as like the human element of it, and I just I really enjoyed it. That was fucking awesome. Oh, thanks, man. That's the I think that the I mean the real pleasure of that project was one hundred percent. 
sent those two people on a surf trip together. Like that makes it easy. Yeah. Said, I don't think that they've been on a surf trip together in, in years. Uh, and just having them down together and it'd be like the, the place we stayed, Los Palmeras down there, the, the host to be, and it's like Josh Mulcoy's spot down there. Mm-hmm. It was like, you're completely like just together the whole time, like the whole crew. And we had Ryan Miller down there who's, anyone who knows Ryan Miller, who's like the legendary photographer, ice cream shop owner and uh, <laughs> dancer, guru. exotic dancer, <laughs> exotic dancer. Uh, but just sort of life of the party. And so we had Ryan down there, and then Jason Crane, Ian Crane's cousin, who's a younger filmer that's been working with us. And then Rory Pringle, who's done all of Mason stuff for like the last six years. Um, and then Sam Moody, who's my co-director on all these projects, who shoots pretty much everything with me. Crushed um, it. So it was like, the, it was the sickest little crew, and Coco and Mason are so fun to be around all the time. And just the way it suited all the boards really nicely, and the project sort of ramped towards these like last few days. And then for that project to sort of end with getting to film Surf 100 down there with uh, Mikey and Dane and Mason, like I think you guys will really love that thing. Oh yeah, yeah. we are very, we are <laughs> very, wait. very excited for that. And again, if, for those of you watching, listening, if you don't have Stab Premium, it is very worth it. All these films are available right there. It's 70 bucks a year. Might sound like a lot at first, but if you look at what you're actually getting. I look at all the shit that my kids, my fiance, and myself <laughs> buy on Amazon Prime, uh, movie and show wise, it's crap. So, Stab Premium is worth more to me than all this bullshit I'm buying on Amazon Prime. That's a PSA, well, that's an endorsement. Your, your vote of confidence means a lot, Cote. So, uh, Surf, yeah, I mean, Surf 100, that's coming up next, right? Surf 100, right after. Now, I believe they haven't set a date on when that's getting released, but yeah, we've got a few other things. We actually did a another little electric acid film, one of the, we, we call them micro doses, um, with Dane and Mikey down there, where they were riding Noah Dean's boards that he got made for his project. Oh my oh, gosh, yeah. you guys are triple, quadruple <laughs> dipping, and I love it. Yeah, that Dane edited with, uh, who, I'm trying to think of who he worked on, that was Hunter Martinez. Um, that, that kid that uh, have you ever seen any of Hunter's surf films oh yeah surf filmmaker he uh, rips hell um, yes so yeah so it's cool like all of a sudden with Steph Premium we have like the opportunity to like do all these projects and have so many of these kids that we've worked with here and there on a few projects like smaller films or something but we have like them on our biggest projects now Michael Suker who lives up in Carlsbad is like love, one of my favorite love him. young mm-hmm. filmmakers he's working on Step High with Will Styles and Sam and those kids yeah, it's cool. It's like a full, like, sausage factory, man. We Love it. We have to put something up every Thursday. Love it. Keep that sausage factory flowing, because we're eating it up. <laughs> but, you know, I'm stoked to get rid of the acid test, Todd. Uh, that project, like, being able to do it, like, episodically and let them go long and stuff. I was, yeah. There, a lot of people were like, oh, I don't want it to get, like, too vloggy. Yeah. But there was just so much of them, like, even the, with, with it running four hours, it's like, we could have made those things so much longer just because they're so fun to see interact. Plus the, the waves are just like they were like very relatable waves. It just it, yeah. it was just the whole thing was just rap. Like it just made me like want to go and. Does surf. it make you want to ride a longboard, Todd? No. <laughs> okay, so do you co- feel like do oh. you feel like you learned something about like alternative boards? Like do you feel like you took away something like when you were going to pick out a board next? He's so stubborn. No, I'm not. He's shaking his head right I've now. I've been surfing. A, <laughs> I've been surfing a bunch of twins. No, it's it's funny too because Coco's been kind of surfing the zone that I surf and like. The other day I was out in the water and like some, someone like kind of, you know, when someone like kind of rides up on you and you're like, what the fuck? And I turn around and it's Coco like just running me over with that longboard that she got. So she's like, she's yeah. super hyped on that long, like it's like you guys kind of opened a door, like legitimately opened a door for her and now she's like. Running Todd over. Yeah, she's really hyped longboard. on the longboard action these days. Oh, see, she's, she is a spectacularly talented surfer. Yeah, it's crazy. But- you don't you you know when you only see her through like a competitive lens for like a decade all of a sudden you see her like just sort of let loose i was like whoa how good is this girl on yeah this like, is it's nuts wild. it's yeah. nutty yeah well that's our goal awesome. ashton is to get todd on a longboard if you didn't know todd ashton is a really great great longboard he's got one you can ride hey look but he's busy i just don't have one he's busy obviously uh, he's I've busy got, he's got 15 shows per the production I have a quiver of longboards built by the same guy that built Coco's, Thomas Bexon, who's Sick. an absolute legend, that I would love for you to ride because you'll 
has to be able to rip on them. Like clunky big nose riders. Yeah. Rip on them. I had a quiver that. of five nines all He's made got by five the nines. same guy. Some of them have two fins. <laughs> if you can believe that. It's crazy. Thank you so much, Ashton. Wait, you rule. Todd. How much do you weigh, Todd? 160. Okay. I heard you guys. Oh my God. Well, the electric we... acid Todd surfboard test. Electric. I've got, I've got three boards for your eye that'll get you rip on that are nothing like your five nines. All right. Well, there we go. I'd lo- I'd actually like to see Todd on acid on any board. Seriously, just acid. We can, we can make that any, happen. Too. Any acid board test. Any acid. Hey, thanks so much, Ashton. You roll. Yeah, I know you're busy. Guys. He's probably, he's probably thanks, driving. Guys, He's oh. driving home and like conceiving 18 new awesome video Seriously. projects. So we'll be there to watch them. We're big fans. Thank you guys. See you later. Get you. get we'll... get stabbed premium. Oh, I just hung up on him. Sorry. Okay, whatever. That I was surf up. news. Oh wait, it's co- no, it's not calling back. It's not calling. No, back. he get he knows. He's done. Um, you want to know a fun fact? Go ahead. I was actually on the last trip with Mason and Coco before this electric acid surfboard test trip. That was me. And I almost call the article Keeping Up with the Ho Slashians. But I didn't. Skate News is brought to you by Adventure wow. IO, ladies still, and gentlemen. So trying to process that just Well wow. I to take a step back, um uh, Coco Ho explained to me why she liked the show Keeping Up with the Kardashians. It was a very it was a common sense explanation. I got it and so I got it. Why wouldn't you just call it. it keeping up with the Nar Nardashians? Because keeping up with the Ho Slashians made sense at the time. It didn't. Mm. Skateboarding this morning is focusing on Japan. Have you seen the park yes. they built for street parks? They built for street. Big. I've seen it. Gnarly. It's huge. Are you excited? It's very cool. Well, we saw, I, I got a picture of it, I think, back when we were at Dutour in Des Moines. Yes. That showed the layout of it. It is, it is massive. It's a mega park. Yeah. Um, and to get you excited for skateboarding in the Olympics, and more importantly, skateboarding on a global scale, especially Japan, uh, a brand new, unbelievably, a brand new Grosso's Love Letters to Skateboarding. Watched it. It's so good. It's really good. It talks about Japan. It's 40 minutes long. It's basically, so it's a, it's been a year since we lost the iconic, the amazing Jeff Grosso, but this, um, see, post posthumously? Yes, post, post, post posthumously. posthumously. Um, this episode is super good. It's just cool because it, it, uh, it, it definitely kind of like has the Japan has a very distinct style of skating and we've seen it kind of like playing out over the over the years and yeah. some very creative ways of looking at obstacles and things in Tokyo and it's uh it's really interesting to watch that's awesome yeah. I, I'm gonna I'm excited but check this out what's up we did get a call back from Ashton what did he say one more thing we're just gonna call him right back one back? more thing okay. it's just real quick right. is he sponsoring the podcast yeah it's, it's, yeah. this is uh, Monday Mass Premium Ashton you you, you picked up a, a champion just now we missed that? Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot to tell you. I, I pulled, as I was dropping off Buck, I just hear, like, Ashton. And I looked over, and it was little Katie Stimmers, who was just coming back from Nicaragua. She won the U.S. champs and got on a plane with her brother and her mom and her sister and went down and got barreled for, like, a week in Colorado. So I was like, you are the sickest. That rules. Girls on the planet. <laughs> Katie Simmers. Thank you. That was Thanks. another exclusive right there. Awesome. We got that. Go. Thanks, Ashton. <laughs> See? Exclusive. Hung up on him again on accident. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, what else is happening in skate world? The barracks. Battle at the barracks Battle at the is barracks. moving along. Influencers versus influencers. We're this, this week we're in the influencer category. Two of the best, two of my favorite games to watch, just because I'm so interested. Uh, influencers most likely are the guys that are going to have like the weird mm-hmm. look and the weird tricks. We saw some of that. Well, I watched the, the only. I actually, I watched both of the influencer heats that went. Yeah. Um, Sunny, so you had Garrett Siljic versus Burberry. Burberry That then, game was sick. And then also um, Garrett Ginner versus Roy, Roy Purdy. Purdy. So the Sunny versus Burberry. That was like kind of like bang, 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 yes. back, back, back. And I, that I, that was probably the one that they had the most pressure because you got Sonny Siljek, who's like Hollywood movie star kid, mm-hmm. and everyone is probably like, oh yeah, well he's a, you know, can he skate? He rips. Yeah, he rips. And uh, Burberry Airy is a wild looking punker, fashion guy. 
He was skating in look, what looked like $5,000 Nike shoes. And both of them ripped. No, they were killing. I was so hyped on those games. And I, and I feel like there's so much pressure on the influencer category mm -hmm. because they're so easy to make fun of. I feel like that heat was good. I feel like the other heat between... Um, between uh, Garrett Ginner and, Roy, and Roy, Garrett just like Garrett's such a fucking gnarly skater. Oh my god! In general, he just walked all over. He did. There was almost a glimpse of a comeback, and Not you could even, tell dude. that Roy Purdy was was yeah. nervous. Yeah. I think he fell on like a kick foot. You, you could but just... Garrett's like he's like pro. Oh yeah, I am very excited to see Dylan Jeb yes. skate in uh, with Al the Barracks. Is he? He's a Encinitas local. Is he gonna, wait, is he going to be skating in the Influencer? I think he's skating in Influencer. Why? Well, because he's not pro yet. Should be. He's not a legend. He's not uh, a Joe, an average Joe. Huh. He's a bit of an influencer because his shit on Instagram is so good. It's so amazing. Yeah, have you seen... Where can we find this... The, uh, the bracket? Heat, yeah. People. On the barracks. I, don't, you, I went on the barracks yesterday. I couldn't find it. It's somewhere on there. We were talking. Uh, I had a uh, we have a rad book club meeting where we talk about social media and content mm -hmm. uh, prior to this, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the advertisement the barracks did leading up to the battle at the barracks, where they were doing like virtual. I don't know. It was weird. Not a good ad. But this whole concept of pros versus Joes versus influencers versus legends it's is very cool. Awesome. I like it. Sixty four skaters in this year's battle at the barracks. That means we have something to watch every weekend from here until March of twenty twenty two. Yep. Very, I'm hyped on the new Battle of Barracks, and so far my favorite game has been Sunny vs. Burberry. Well, there's only been two. Well, there's been four. Well, who was the other two ones? The other two before were Joe's. Oh, the Joe's. Yeah, Joe's. Okay, okay, yeah. um, oh, do you have oh. six minutes to dedicate yourself to some of the rawest, radicalist street skating videos of the year? X Games Real Street. The best part about X Games, in my opinion, is out now. You've got parts dropping from Jake Anderson, Matt Berger, Berger Chris Col Cookie Colburn, Axel Kreisberg, Ducky Kovacs, Frankie Spears, Milton Martinez, and Alexis Ramirez. I that saw, is a hammer hitting. Crew. I saw one of Milton's clips. Oh my god! I just watched Milton's video. It's so he is on such a another level as far as like not being scared to oh my god carcass down things. And he almost died in his part probably six times. One time. His spotter, which I believe was um, another pro, Killer Pizza, I Dude, believe, did he, not spot very well. The <laughs> Ollie, year. he did this one that was like an Ollie out to wall ride oh, around God. the stair set that was basically like push as hard as you can, Ollie, fly into a On wall. Into a wall. Like Just fly in. into a wall. Straight in. Yeah. And yeah, then somehow, not really. it's crazy. So go and watch that. Milton Martinez has got my vote. For you think he's got your vote? Yeah, I think he's, he's going to do it. Yeah, I'm... Oof. They but, are, they're all so good. And uh, also, in other news of extreme... News of the X. X Games is back. But I it's an all an new format. Sorry. The new X Games. What is it? It's like they're doing it in people's backyards and a couple events here, a couple events there. It's not the big festival that we would usually consider the X Games. This but is kind of like the budget X Games. X Games light. There will yeah. be no performance by 21 Pilots. There will be no uh, Black Eyed Peas show mm -mm. at Winter nope. X. No, there won't be. No, this is about backyard ripping. So we're going to see skateboarding go down. Uh, wait, skateboard street park. And Vert. Yeah, it's all going to be at the CATF. <coughs> California Training Facility. Right over here in Vert. Vista. Vert is happening. So you can look forward to, uh, you know, Brando telling you what's going on in skateboarding. Go. The core world of skateboarding. Um, there's no Vert skating in the Olympics, but X Games will feature skaters like Michi Brusco, Guy Curry, who was 11 years old when he landed the first 1080. Guy Fieri? Guy Fieri. 11-year-old okay. Guy Fieri. No, Guy Curry. Guy Guy Curry. Guy, Guy Curry. G. Uh, the, back to the barracks. The barracks has dropped a really cool mini documentary about Petar Stewie Stanchev. Instantly recognizable Barcelona local. A little person. Stanchez skate spots are typically scaled way up compared to other skaters. So I was tagged a bunch in the, some of Stewie's first videos because he's got glasses. He mm -hmm. looks like me. 
He's a little person. He's Ripped. ten times better than me at skateboarding. So don't no need to tag me in his videos. He rules. Uh, a really cool documentary that kind of shows not only a day in the life, but it shows that the dude's brilliant. He speaks four languages. Talented artist and has a great sense of humor. It's called Standing on the Giant's Shoulders, and it's a must-watch. It's awesome. It's very cool. I want to. I, I, I saw the little teaser for it. Yeah, today. it's cool. I yeah, just, I think that's really rad. Very cool. There's so much. There's just so much rad shit happening in skateboarding and in inclusion. It's just everybody's welcome. Good. Everybody because rad. there's ain't shit happening in snowboarding. True. I actually I have some snowboarding news. Thank, Not very much. Thank God. Um, I did see a chart. Do you want to talk some numbers, facts, and figures? This is Marketplace. Do -do, do -do 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 -do. Skateboarding has mm -hmm. seen uh, incredible growth. In the last year, up 36%. Wow. How do they know this? Uh, just people. They just go to skate parks and go, you guys skate? And they <laughs> raise their hand. They did it 9 million times. So right now, the rough count of skateboarders in the world is 9 million. Up by 2. So 2.26 million people potentially started skateboarding last year. Hmm. That's a lot of skateboarding and skateboarders. Mm -hmm. Surfing, we're not quite there yet. We have 5.6 million. We're yeah, up 1.7%. There's 5.6 million people out this weekend in the water. Yeah. At my spot. At Todd's spot. Was Coco one of them? she run you over again no, on her longboard? No, no. We've um, had enough Coco Ho talk on the podcast. I know, this right? Not Too much. We're She's great. Keeping but, up know. with the Coco Ho slash ins. You're going to get more because we're definitely going to talk about Surf 100 when it comes out. All right. Um, snow News is brought to you by K2 Snowboarding. There's one right there. Hey, check it out. After winning an Olympic medal, a world championship, multiple X Games medals, snowboarder Ariel Gold is calling it a career. The tw 20, She's retiring at 25 years old. Yeah, well, I think it's, she was going to school last year. She's doing stuff. Uh, she Maybe she's just kind of stepping back and doing something else. So when you retire as a snowboarder, does Some, that mean you just don't not doing contests some, anymore? Sometimes it means your sponsor dropped you. Okay. <laughs> or you want to go back to school. I just think it's pretty rad. You're 25 years old and you're like, oh, I'm good. I did it. Yep. But she won an Olympic medal, world champion, tons of X Games gold there you go. and stuff. So congratulations on a great career. Can't wait to see your free riding now. Um, last last week we talked a little bit about um, urban or uh, fake fake snow mm -hmm. stuff. Well, there's a new one happening. Uh, it's in uh, Milwaukee. Cool. And and you can go there. It's a, a a ski and snowboard simulator. Wow. So you can go and train in these simulators, and that's. Some news oh. in snow. You know, it's funny. Uh, when I was driving back, um, I had to go do an, that event in Connecticut last year, and I drove by that crazy mall heading to Newark, to the oh, airport in Newark. American Dream. Yeah, with the snowboard slope and the wave pool. We yes. Should, yeah, we should just go there. Oh, my gosh. I, I can get us in. That's a Will, Will Scudin Surf School. And we can go snowboarding. Out out there. We can go snowboarding, too. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's do that. Let's do that. Go sure. fund me. Yeah. Send Todd and Chris to New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, Utah's 15 resorts tallied 5,301,766 skier days in 2020-2021. Mm -hmm. So from two years ago, they had 5.15 million a, ski days. Are we in a stats class right now? Do, 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 do. This is all Marketplace. All you can find was stats. Um, this is a record. We're up about a million in the COVID era. So everybody... When the pandemic hit, everybody went snowboarding, apparently. 5.15 million skiers, snowboarders hitting the slopes of that Utah. Was la that was last year, because remember, you, you got to remember the resorts all closed early. You got to top, before. yeah. 80, they had like not a very good snow year, yeah. so what but does they, that tell they, you? It came raging back. People want to be outside. It's one of the, sa the safer activities you can do. Because you're already wearing masks more often than not, snowboarding. Yeah. Well, that's, that uh, just means the we got a raging snow bone here in that's Utah. That's it. That's it. We're not in Utah. That's it for snow yeah. news. Oh wait, my bomb hole came out last week, and it, it's oh my god. So can we you talk guys about? Want to check it out? It's over at bombhole.com. I don't want to complain, but how come nobody ever uh, po reposts Todd's um, pictures from when he's on the Monday Mass? They do. What are you talking about? I wore a Monday Mass shirt on the bomb. I did see that. Oh. Thank you for that. But man, you got a lot of press out of that. I did. I mean, everyone. Well, those those guys are. They're a press machine, but it was. I think it came out good. Everyone seems to be happy about it. So if you know, listen if you want. Go I got a snippet. I got a snippet of it. Really? Yeah. Which snippet? This is my favorite part of the actual. 
What do you mean? This is just Todd making noises. Oh, this is like the cut, the, the quick cut. Oh my gosh. Here you go. This is Todd on the bumble. Picture a really pale version of a kid who discovered punk rock and skateboarding at a time where it was like you were oh. either into the dead or you You're were making into cry right here. Van Halen. I can put a rock in crew or you were a jock. There was, there was no deviating from those three things in high school. So right. I'm like this dwarf of a human, weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was beat up a lot. I was yeah. in lockers. Mm -hmm. Still I was happens. Spit on. I was mm -hmm. just shit whatever. on. People <laughs> were like, it was harsh back then. Wow, did I just no, kind of trigger it? You had my trigger? a moment there. This was the yeah. <laughs> so you, Todd had a rough. You life. pushed the wrong this one. Villain. This villain. Like no, that's not it either. Oh my god! How many it's freaking like posts did they give you? It's like you? the first post. How can you never make any of those noises yeah. on the Monday Mass? I, I don't know how. He never makes those noises here, folks. You don't make those noises for me. That uh, was snowboard news brought to you by Casey. Space the Bongo loves you. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven posts dedicated to Todd Richards got some on good, the Bongo. Because they had numbers. They want to keep it going. It was good. It was a really it was a good conversation. 34.8. Wow. Fuck. Yeah. Thank you, Bombhole, for uh, having Todd Richards on there. Someday you'd be on there. Yeah. 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 Someday you could be. I don't know enough about it. They, they know I don't. I, they, don't they know you don't listen to Snowboard. All right. Well, that was that was Snowboard News. Let's keep moving. Okay. We don't need this to be as long as the bomb hole. No. That was three hours, bomb hole, by the way. Nerd News brought to you by Panic and Coffee and Tea. I watched uh, a couple movies over the weekend. You did? I did. On One on HBO Max. It was called No Sudden Move. Steven Soderbergh film. Crime, yeah. crime classic. Did you like it? It's good. It took me two nights to watch it, which is kind of becoming. Do you now? Do you split movies up over? Two I try scenes? not to because it's. I like to to consume the meal. I do too, but usually at my house, like we start a movie after the kids go to bed, which mm -hmm. is nine o'clock, and then it's ten o'clock. You're halfway through. We're like, let's finish it tomorrow. No sudden move. Good, but better. Mm. Luca. I haven't seen it. Luca on Disney Plus. It's about two sea monsters who turn into humans. Uh, I'm sorry. It's what? super good. Animated. But F9 took the top spot Does in the box office. Does either one of them live on the second floor? No. No. Nobody lives upstairs from Luca. Okay. And nobody's um, hurting Luca. Listen, I... So I'm going to my mom's on next week. Okay. And all of a sudden, like, I just start talking with a... My daughter's going with me, so I've been talking to my daughter in a Massachusetts accent. Just right. for, like, fun around the house. So then I decided that I wanted to watch The Departed the other night. Right. And so we watched The Departed, and then last night I watched The Town. Okay. I'm on like a, a Massachusetts, uh, you know, that's what I've been watching. You should watch, uh, if you really want to feel enlightened and just happy, mm. um, watch Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> Manchester by the Sea? It's definitely one of the more depressing films I ever. I don't want to watch that. Um, hey, but the Rivers, the river. Mystic River. Pizza, Mr. Pizza. What are some of the best? Give me three must-see Massachusetts movies besides Jaws. Well, Jaws wasn't supposed to be in Massachusetts. I thought that was uh, Martha's Vineyard. Well, they filmed it in Martha's Vineyard, but and it was supposed to be Amity, New York. Oh, okay. Right? Where's Amity. Martha's Vineyard? Martha's Vineyard's off of Cape Cod. In Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. Okay, so I was half right. I don't know. The I, town for sure. I, I think The Departed. The Departed. The town. And then, um, what about part, the Whitey Bulger one? I haven't seen that one. It's good. Johnny Depp as is Whitey Bulger, yeah. Huh. Sorry. Okay, well, that's that. I was, what was your third one? Oh, I didn't have a third one. But I want to talk about the new Star Wars um, anime. Yeah. It's this new thing. It's like basically Star Wars stories done in the animation style, the anime oh, style. Oh, no way. Yeah. And it's good? It's kind of like, yeah, it's going to be rad. I'm excited for that. It's going to be really cool. Um, what is soon. what are your thoughts on the upcoming film, Black Widow, which is out very soon here? I like Stephen With Dorf. Scarlett Johansson. I think Stephen Dorff's a rad actor. He's not in it. I thought he was. He was railing against it. Oh, wait. what's Who's the actor that plays the... Um, he was in Stranger Things, and he's also in... Uh, oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. The cop in Stranger Things. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what his name is. Hopper. Hopper. His name's Hopper. Hopper's in it. I don't know. I, I I think it's cool. I think I think Marvel's been doing some really interesting things with their properties. I like. I'm a big fan of Loki. I think Loki's really cool. Loki I rips. Thought, I loved WandaVision. Um, 
I wasn't such a huge fan of the Captain America one, but it's still cool. Yeah. But like, there's there. I haven't really found a um, a Marvel movie that I haven't been excited about. about. Now, something I did watch the other night that has been getting people have been really bummed on it is and it's, it's you know kind of has a segue from a Marvel into this because it, it's the actor that plays uh, um, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, freaking. Chris Pratt. Star Lord. Yeah. Chris yeah. Pratt's in that new movie, like Tomorrow. Ed, Edge of Tomorrow yeah. or some shit. I, I don't maybe that's probably not even the right name. It Tomorrow War. Tomorrow War. The Tomorrow War. It's yeah. pretty good. See, I am excited. I'm gonna watch that on a plane. It's junk. I have yeah, plane it's movies. Airplane junk food. Okay, I have three airplane movies. So anybody out there traveling soon, here's three airplane movies. Go. Okay. The Tomorrow War. Mm-hmm. F9. I'm not watching that. Fast and the Furious yeah. Nine. I've seen all the Fast and the Furious movies on planes. Okay. What's they're it? horrible and they're entertaining. What's the next one? Um, the next one, I might go Black Widow, but Ooh. the jury's out. So F9 and Tomorrow War, plane movies, for sure. Okay. Uh, Nintendo has an update on the Switch. Oh, God. This is, there was a lot of people that were upset about this today. So why? Because... So the Switch, there's been this rumor that Switch is, a new Switch was coming out for yeah. a long time. And people thought it was going to have 4K and, and have updated graphics and right. be like more powerful. Turns out it's just a bigger screen, a bigger OLED screen. Oh, what's OLED mean? Um, it's just bigger than bigger LED. Well, I don't know. It's just better, um, better quality. Okay. So better right resolution. now, yeah, it's, oh, you get more, more battery life. More battery well. life, but, but but it's the same battery life because the Switch had an update in 2019 that kind of brought better battery life to it. Better battery life? I, I <laughs> predominantly play my Switch in portable mode. I predominantly play well, my I Switch. Predominantly, I use my Switch in portable mode because a lot of airplane. I'm a uh, try to, Switch user. I'm an avid Switch user. Try to, what I try to kill people. Well, the OLED is quite disappointing for most Switch users. Anyway, the screen is bigger. Battery lasts longer. Nothing else. Secession. Season three is coming. Do you watch Succession? No. Two. I'm not watching A Handmaid's Tale until you watch Succession. I'll tell you what I'm. I can't wait for is this new Sopranos movie. Ooh, The Many With Saints of Newark. James Gandolfini's son. That's the shit, right that there. That is the shit. And if you, we've all probably watched the trailer by now. It looks it's real good. good. And it's just, just the fact that your son is playing your character. So there's the Post, resemblance. Post, post posthumously. Post. Po- Post posthumous. They, he just look. It looked. It's very believable. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Awesome. Um, I love gangster movies too. Yeah. By the way, I I caught a lot of dubs on Fortnite on the weekend. Whatever, it's not a big deal. I'm just really good at it. Getting good, getting better. Uh, that was nerd news. The, what do you got? What, what? 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 Dubs. Did you watch? Uh, wait. Wait. Shit. Did, was there a new Rick and Morty on Sunday? Did not watch it yet. I haven't watched it yet. Either. But it's I out, know and you happening. know it's going to be good. Yeah, no one knows what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen to Rick and Morty. Mm. We're just very excited to see it. I want to go uh, questions provided by beneath, presented by Beneath Apparel. The clone decoys are dead. Um, before you get there, we want to say thank you. There's a shout-out section, brand new. Thank you to Trevor Reese, Nathan Reza, Wesley Grant, Chris Cahill, Mikey Wynn, the man, Brennan Strait, and Ethan Norton for buying Monday Mass Hats. We've got 12 more hats to go. There you go. Buy and more. we're going to put those on the in, inter, internet soon. So from that, let's go to questions. Here we go. We've got some questions, Todd. We've got some pretty good questions, actually. I'm going to start with this one. Monday Mass question. After watching Noah... Oh, we, we kind of talked about this, but this is pretty good still. Adam at start. After watching Dane Noah Dean's clips writing Switch, do you think more surfers will try to ride Switch? Who do you think would try to ride Switch in a WSL competition? We answered this. We think it's going to take a minute because surfers, surfers are stubborn AF. But someone that is influential to change the game is Noah Dean. I think Noah Dean is a good one. I think uh, Italo potentially um, could be the first like WSL competitor to make a functional Switch Mm-hmm. score happen but you know it's like look if John John decides that he wants to take that on and make it part of his uh, his deal yeah go for it go for it uh, this is a comment slash question from Hana Lee Hana Lee 
Uh, a few weeks ago, we were talking about OnlyFans, and we don't know. We didn't know what OnlyFans in. We is we we kind of just. Con- uh, now we know. We just thought you had to go on there and pull pull on something or pull something out or show something, maybe pulling show pulling on something. Well, here's your question. Um, the OnlyFans content isn't always X-rated, but it's generally something that will get someone taken down from Instagram like nipples or butts. Okay. Um, so the question is, where do you longboarders fit in the skateboarding culture. Todd said longboard dancing was a bit silly and they've heard street skaters say longboards are skaters like them. Is this the same in surfing? So Hanalee wants to know longboard skateboarding compared to longboard surfing. So um, it's a different sport. It's a different sport. Same tree. I actually was a uh, amateur longboard skater. You remember gravity skateboards? Mm-hmm. I was in gravity skateboards ads doing airs and stuff on longboards. Was it like a, Was it like your niche? It was a little bit of a niche. I just kind of went along. I got, like, they wanted to sponsor me, and I was skating, and the boards were fun to ride. So for a couple months, I was on Team Gravity. Because I remember back in the day, like, when we would, there was always, like, that one, there was, like, one or two people that I came in contact with when I was coming up skating that would yeah. skate, a, like, a Schmidt Sticks uh, big boy ch- chainsaw. Board. Yeah. Like, the big, and we were all like, oh. And it was kind of like a novelty, like, oh, that's right. the dude that rides the longboard. It is rare these days to see longboard skateboards at parks. You see it very you know, every once in a while, um, but of course you still see just as many longboard skates on the streets. I, what I'm talking about with the guy, the dancing, the guy that's like doing these I, that men is, and women, whatever. It's just goony. My personal opinion. It can opinion. be beautiful though. Yeah. No. I think it's. I think it, it's. It's a totally different thing. I think some I've seen some young. It's just way too bolder for me. I've seen some some women, young Japanese girls riding longboard skateboards, doing crazy ballet style mm. moves, and that's pretty cool looking. Again, it's just entertainment. It's like, just, like I watch it and I'm like, it smells like patchouli. I just think a a good cruiser board kind of killed the yeah. longboard. Yeah. 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 Kevin Moore. Oh, the homie, Kevin, um, wants to know, what are you guys looking forward to the most in the Olympics? Surfing or skateboarding? Skateboarding park. Skateboarding park as well for me. I'm excited to see surfing, but when you see the skateboarding park, you see it's going to be really gnarly. You know that people are going to be throwing down hard, crazy shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm with you. It's going to be wrong. Yeah, it's going to be. I mean, I'm excited to see everything in the Olympics, but skate park is going to be awesome. There's two pictures of me doing ollies that's cool. at Anarchy Park. There's my rash. Uh, this, that's not it. Um, this is from John Veter from Canada. When are you guys going to do a show or session at Chris Borst's ramp? Ooh. Um, we could probably go over there and skate Chris Borst's ramp. He says he wants to see Todd pad up and ride it. Yeah, me too. So what's stopping you? Desire. <laughs> desire. Main, mainly desire. Injury. Um, this is a question for Todd from Jack Baker. What's up, Jack? How do I get Cali weed sent to the UK? How do you get Cali? How do you get your Cali weed to the UK? Um, in well, your ass. What, what you're going to need to do is find yourself a mule. In your butt. In your butt. Or someone's butt. In the mule's butt. Uh, no, we don't condone drug smuggling across uh, international borders. Um, I believe he said in the UK they do not get good Cali-style weed. Hmm. Um, come to California. It's legal here. You can do whatever you want with it once you get here. You can mm-hmm. put it in your butt if you want. I mean, I don't know what you want to do with it. You can smoke it. Um, this is a hard one to say. We need um, to do like one more question because I'm supposed to go take my daughter and, and my niece surfing. Asinonics. A-C-I-N-O-N-I-Y-X. Wants to know, tell us something we don't know about behind the scenes at surf contests. Yeah. Um, like judging and stuff like that. What's something we don't know? What's something they don't know? Who? The judges? Um, behind the scenes, something... Well, the judges do have conversations about scores sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's something that people might not know. They used to be blocked off from each other, but now they talk a little bit. I this hear, is uh, this is a good... Oh, go I ahead. do remember at one event when we were in New York, I was doing beach commentary with um, Chad Wells, and the judges leaned in to ask me what just... It was like, uh, I think, um, Kersey did a burial. Right. And the judges leaned in to ask me what it was into the booth. Yeah. 
So that's a problem. That's kind of an issue. That's a problem. But that's been corrected. The judges aren't as behind the times anymore. True. This is a question from John Schofield. Two more quick ones. You All just right. be very okay. quick. Okay. Following up on Todd's bombhole interview. Again, everyone's talking about Todd's bombhole interview. I was on the bombhole. He was on the bombhole. I don't know if you saw it on social media. Great news. Um, which, by the way, was the best bombhole to date, according to John. Thanks, John. Um, he's got. A, he wants to merge surf and surf news and nerd news. Who is the Han Solo and the Princess Leia of surfing? The Han Solo of surfing. And then you could also name any other Star Wars character with surfer comparisons, okay, like. Han. Gabriel Medina could be Darth Maul. Who's the Han Solo of surfing? John John? Benji. Benji Weatherly. Okay. And who's the Princess Leia of surfing? Princess Leia of surfing is Steph. Steph Gilmer. Okay. Do you have any other comparisons? Any other notable Star Wars? Who is Star the Wars? Yoda of surfing? Uh, Ray Kelly Mata. Slater. I think Ray Oh, Mata. okay. It's kind of like we, we were calling him Brown Yoda for who's a while. Who's the Obi-Wan Kenobi of surfing? Ooh. Tom Curran? Yes. Okay. Good one. Um, last question is from Scott Huffman. Aren't joggers the adult version of pajamas? Roman knows what's up, and that's my yes. son who's now at the zoo in pajamas. Yes, it is. Your and son, your son running the pajama game. I don't know why you don't have a pajama deal for him. Anybody out there with a pajama company for uh, nine-year-olds, soon to be ten-year-olds? The kid seriously wears them everywhere. Like, there's not a better like he. I wonder how many people he's influencing with just you just running jammy program. Yeah, he is the pajama. Bandit. Does he have does he have day jammies and night jammies? Just all jammies. All his jammies have holes in the knees. What was the last, blood, what was last time just... he wore pants? Um, oh, maybe the last day of school. Really? For like an hour, and then he got home. He's like Mr. Rogers. My, this is my son we're talking about. He comes home from school, and he's like, ah, immediately puts his pajamas on. Okay, so I need to know this because I feel like I need to go okay. and find jammies for him. Yeah. What kind of jammies does he like? Target brand, just um, he likes cl- thin, he, he like likes cotton, cotton jammies. Yeah, but okay. long legs, long arms. Okay. Okay. Doesn't like short arms. He will, but long ar- long legs, long arms. What about like in the summertime, the pajama jam, the spring suit jam? He doesn't care. Okay. He would I'm, rock spring suit. I'm gonna get him some jammies. All right, Todd's going to find rock suit pajamas. I gotta, I gotta go. We're out of here. Uh, thank you for joining us. Um, this is not the bomb hole. No. But but Todd's still on this one. Well, yeah. He come down to our level. I'm, I'm down. Back down. on the Monday mass. But we'll see you guys next week. No, you won't, because I'll be in fucking Cape Cod. Hey, he's going to Cape uh-huh. Cod, Massachusetts. Buy a hat. Going shock fishing with my body. Tell him to like and subscribe in your Massachusetts accent. Why don't you guys smash the freaking like button and subscribe to this channel, huh?